Okay, today's topic, strategy. The most important job of the entrepreneur is to define strategy. The entrepreneur has to be able to understand how, where, and why they are going to compete in the marketplace in which they operate. You have to, as a business owner and an entrepreneur, be ready for change and uncertainty. And your strategy is what helps you navigate change. Capital is probably one of the most important components of your overall strategy. And there's two types of capital. There's financial capital, which would represent cash that you need for your investment purposes. That could be funding from uh, investors. That could be savings, um, but, but it's cash. Intellectual capital is a different kind of capital. Intellectual capital is really about knowledge acquired by the company that is used to create a competitive advantage. Intellectual com capital is comp comprised of three components human capital, structural capital, and customer capital. And again, intellectual capital is about harnessing knowledge, gathering, organizing, and disseminating the collective wisdom and experience of your employees and using it toward making your business better. Human capital is really about the brain power of your workforce. Structural capital is about the knowledge and experience and intellectual property your, co your company holds. So it can be patents, copyrights, trademark, people, experience, etc. And customer capital is really about the goodwill and the relationships that you have established with your customer base. All of those are harnessed to create your competitive advantage. And your competitive advantage is the aggregation of factors that set you apart from the competition. And your competitive advantage gives you a unique and superior position in the mar marketplace. A good competitive advantage is sustainable and difficult to duplicate. It's repeatable. And your customers should be able to articulate your competitive advantage. Your, a customer should be able to say, I go to Oceanside Yoga because they offer the best variety of classes, or they have the most experienced or the most patient instructors. Those would be examples of somebody articulating a competitive advantage. When we're talking about planning strategy for the small business, it's a little bit different than planning for a Fortune 500 company because number one, the planning horizon is shorter. It can be a few weeks, months, or years. Uh, obtaining employee feedback is really important because you don't have the money to try and fail continually. And so getting, getting harnessing feedback and their human capital and their structural capital is, is really critical at this juncture. Uh, your planning needs to be flexible and you really have to focus on thinking and working out ideas rather than planning at first. Once you've identified a core strategy and are ready to implement it, then plan away and implement and execute. The first step in the strategic management process is to develop a clear vision. Vision provides directions, helps you make decisions, and motivates you, your employees, and hopefully keeps your customers coming back to you. Your mission statement, on the other hand, answers the question, what business am I in? It's, it's short, it fits on a business card, it expresses your purpose and your values, and it identifies what type of business you are. McDonald's mission statement, for example, is something along the lines of, we want to be our customers' best way to eat, or favorite way to eat. One sentence, very simple, and really it doesn't identify McDonald's as, as serving burgers because they don't just serve burgers but they provide customers with a fast and convenient and hopefully delicious, depending on your taste, way to have a quick, fast, and high quality meal. The next step in the strategic management process is to develop, to develop a SWOT analysis. 
SWOT is a tool that is used by just about every business, and a lot of times it's used by individuals um, because it's so valuable and helpful. And SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And what it does is it allows you to look at the business from a very unique viewpoint. So strengths and weaknesses are internal. Internal means you can control them. Your strengths are the positive internal factors that help you to accomplish the mission of the organization. And, your, and the weaknesses are negative internal factors. So a strength, for example, that I can control might be something like my pricing strategy. A weakness might be something like my employee training procedures. And by the way, either of those could be strengths or weaknesses depending on whether they're good or bad. The important thing is that I can control them. Opportunities and threats are external, meaning you can't control them. Opportunities are good. External forces, they're positive. So there might be some kind of trend that I want to take advantage of. Um, let's say that, that I'm a distillery and I see this trend of lots of people drinking healthy drinks and so I make a, I, and so I, I make a product line that's based on kombucha, for example. Threats would be negative external forces that affect your company's ability to be successful. These might be um, regulatory changes, these might be things that your competitor is doing, these might be changes in tax structure. The important element here is that you can't control them, so basically you have to watch out for them and respond where you can, but they're very hard to plan for. Ideally, your SWOT will help to identify your key success factors, and those success factors are those elements of your business or those elements of what you do or how you do, how you, how you run your business. Uh, that will help to determine your success in the marketplace. You want to manipulate your key success factors in order to help to maintain your competitive advantage. You need to know who your competition is and you need to know what their strategies and tactics are. You need to know who the new competitors are coming into the marketplace. You need to react to what they do better yet to anticipate what they're going to do before they do it, and you need to continually be able to differentiate your product from theirs. And there's two types of competitors. There's direct competitors, people who do the exact same thing that you do, think McDonald's and Burger King, and indirect competitors. Indirect competitors are people or, people or entities that do something similar. For example, McDonald's sells food, so does Papa John's. They're probably indirect competitors. Um, McDonald's sells food, so does the grocery store. There's an indirect competition there. Papa John's, I would argue, is probably a little bit more significant than the grocery store because then it's someone that goes to the grocery store isn't interested in having their food hot, fast, and now. You need to develop goals and objectives. Goals are long-term, broad, and overarching. Think about answering the question, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in three years? If you want to be the, um, the biggest beer distributor in Southern California, that's a pretty big goal. So in order to get there, you're going to have to set some measurable step goal stones or milestones. We refer to those objectives, those, those measurable milestones or objectives. The key to objectives is they have to be measurable and they have to align to the goal. And then getting to strategy. There's three options for strategy and kind of a hybrid strategy. The first strategy is cost leadership. And this is when you're the lowest cost relative to your competitors. So you're the cheapest guy in the marketplace. And this works well when your buyers are sensitive to price changes, so they don't want to pay, they're, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna patronize your business if you, if you change prices drastically. Uh, if you sell commoditized products, or if you're trying to take advantage, or if you can take advantage of economies of scale. Economies of scale simply means that the more you make, the cheaper your product or service is to produce, and so you can charge less. 
Differentiation is when you're competing on the uniqueness of your good or your service. And differentiation works well if, if you can create high brand loyalty and low price sensitivity, meaning that people love your product and they'll pay a premium for it if need be. So an example of a company that might differentiate would be a department store like uh, Nordstrom's or Macy's. They're competing based on service or on um, styles that they carry or on brands. Um, but they're not going to be the cheapest in the market. You have to be able to identify how your business is special. Amazon would be another example of a company that differentiates. Your next op option is a focus strategy. And a focus strategy is where you concentrate on one segment of the market. Either you sell one product, you sell the one, one um, a segment of the market group, like you sell to seniors or you sell to athletes. Um, for example, that's one very tightly controlled segment. And your product has to meet the customer's special needs, wants, and interest. So you're focusing on the difference in that segment and how you're fulfilling a need for that specific different market segment. A store that just sells uh, shoes for soccer players would be an example. Um, and the business needs to be able to target the consumer's special needs. Um, a doctor's office that targets um, uh, one, uh, like a um, OBGYN, for example, an obstetrics office, targets a specific uh, customer segment. The last variation would be what we would call a focus differentiation strategy, where we take the two strategies and kind of make a hybrid. And that would be a company like In-N-Out. Really, they have a focus strategy because they sell uh, uh, a very narrow product line, burgers, fries, shakes, and sodas, and, and unique combinations of those and something they call a secret menu. Uh, but when you ask people why they go to In-N-Out, it's not because they want to get a burger. It's because they either like the quality or they like the taste or they like the value. And so... Um, in and out would be a company that's kind of harnessing both of those um, strategies into its own hybrid strategy. The last step is execution. And execution is probably the most difficult part of the strategic planning process because you have to implement. You have to identify when you need to have things done. You need to have stepping stones to get there. You need to identify your resources, know who's going to do what, and Above all, know why you're doing all of this work in the first place. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? And if you can do that, you have executed a strategy that will hopefully lead you to vast success in your entrepreneurial endeavor. And that's it.